Hey everyone, Josh here. We're back at this Silver Toreg. Uh, we did a video a little bit ago on battery drains, diagnosing what's going on. Uh, I thought I had the issue down, but I did not. So it's better. I used to kill the battery about a day or two. So now we're at a week. So it's better, but not great. So now we're in the Kessi uh, rebuild or repair. So I'm gonna skip into uh, pulling codes. Uh, it tells you pretty obvious if you have a Kessi fault, as well as removing it and kind of getting it to this point. Uh, a few things you need is a very fine soldering iron because those are your two MOSFETs that fail. And these groups of three are the resistors that fail. So from Moser or Mauser Electronics, we have our resistors. So there's the Mauser part number if you want to look it up. I'll put a link in the bottom in the description as well if you want to uh, just click on it. So these were 31, three, 0.317 of dollars, so 31 cents, 32 cents. And they are tiny. So we're going to go, oh, I guess we have these uh, um, MOSFETs as well. So here's the part number. And these were a dollar and two cents, so Canadian prices. So I got four in there. You only need two and two of the lows and six of those for one Kessie unit. So I'm gonna skip to uh, pulling codes and then getting this out, and then uh, yeah, we'll come back to this. Okay, so we got VCDS plugged in. So quick and easy way. Electronics, start authorization. You hear a little bit of clicking underneath there. That's basically the Kessie unit. Okay, so I had a dead battery here. So these bottom three, just ignore them. The ones we're looking at is antennas, open circuit, driver side, passenger side, and rear bumper. So, clear the codes. Nothing will come back, but if you go back, even if you just go to fault codes, they'll still be there. Or they won't be there. So go out of the controller. Go back into it and you'll hear it click again. That was three distinctive clicks, fault codes, and there we go. We still have those three antennas. So if you have multiple antenna failures, that's a pretty good uh, indication that you've got a Kessie issue. So we're going to get BCDS out of here and take this apart. So we're up in the fender well, or the uh, footwell here. So we got this panel out. So you got those two bolts there. The OBD2 port just comes out. You just have a couple little clips you kind of pry. And then just that light. So we're in here now. So this is your body control module. And the one beside it right here is your Kessie module. So it's got two little clips there. You got to pop them apart. Then it'll come over and then we can get the harness undone. So I'm going to set this up and then uh, see if I can record it somewhat. So the main reason for repairing or rebuilding this is this Kessie unit is matched to your key in ECU. So if you get a used one online, you still have to go get it reprogrammed, which you're buying the Kessie unit and then you're paying to get it reprogrammed. Whereas this is $2 for your six resistors if they're all bad. And this will be $2 for the two MOSFETs. 
so you're in it four bucks basically uh, the bad part was uh, shipping was twenty dollars so it adds a bit of price to it but whatever so I figure I'll just kind of go over this while I still have the nice crisp picture with my iPhone before I switch over to my camera so you got these two legs here that you're gonna have to desolder uh, your MOSFETs your new ones are just straight legs so you're gonna have to cut the drain here cut it back and then you have to get creative and just bend these down the other issue is this will be soldered onto this pad here so back on just checking resistance so that's one thing you have to make sure so first we're gonna desolder these two legs and then I don't know, I'm not a circuit board expert, so we're gonna have to heat this up somehow to get this actually off. So we're gonna switch over to my less than crisp camera and start out that. So desoldering these, you'll see there's only a little bit of solder on the sides of the legs. So if you hit that with the soldering iron, you can wait till it turns to liquid. It would be pretty obvious to tell. Then you get in there with the pick and just kind of pop those legs up nice and easy. Uh, just make sure you don't hit the blue tower things, whatever they're called, with the soldering iron and melt the casing. So the next thing to get the base off, we're going to use a heat gun. Uh, you want to be very careful with this. Um, if you're not careful where you're putting heat, you might end up with a couple extra components falling off, which we'll see here shortly. So yeah, if you're using a heat gun, be very, very careful. So I think I missed that with the camera because I was using my knees to kind of hold the board. So the heat gun on the back side of the board, I tried the soldering iron first, but I just kind of marks that up. So heat gun and just gently kind of holding onto it with pliers. And there's our pads. So we're going to clean these up with uh, the soldering wick. And then tin everything and then uh, we'll get these new ones bent up and good to go so here we're making the legs how they're supposed to look so I bent the center one up just to cut it off and then the outside ones you just kind of uh, look at the old one and kind of do the best you can uh, they basically it has to sit at the same level as the base like it has to sit flat so you can just kind of eyeball it from there and some nice small side cutters would have worked nicely but I didn't have any so what I found worked really good was put a bit of solder onto where the base is and then solder the legs on as you can see here once the legs are soldered on um, I used well in the video I used the pick to hold it down while heating it upside down and that was where I ran into issues with other components falling off so if you use needle nose pliers and kind of clamp the MOSFET down and then heat so you can actually look at the heat gun not heating it upside down you can make sure you're not getting any other components hot and end up with them stuck on your heat gun and falling off so yeah don't do what I'm doing here so with a little bit of extra solder added to the pad and the back of here it seemed to be on there nicely uh, what worked nicely was hold kind of clamp that in there with uh, needle nose pliers and then flip it over and heat the pad itself. You have to be careful because I was doing it upside down at first and I ended up with some spare parts uh, stuck to my heat gun. So that's off of this pad right here. So now I gotta stick that back on and then uh, yeah, we'll see if the cold's your way. So here we're taking off the resistors, so I found worked really good was heat up the one side, use the pick and pop it up, and then heat up the other side, then it should fall off. So here's the six of them soldered on. So they're, we'll check resistance there quick. So they were the same as before, so I don't think I had any bad ones, but it doesn't hurt to have new ones on.
So we'll plug that in and see what happens. So I killed the battery a bit more here, so I'm just gonna get this Kessie unit put back into its home and uh, scan it later after I get the battery charge it on for a while. So on yours, once you get it back in, scan it, clear the codes and see if you have an antenna fault again. Uh, if you do, then more than likely that antenna is actually the issue. Uh, where this one with multiple antenna faults, pretty certain that's going to fix it. So that's the end of this video. I'm um, hoping to bring my beige one home, so that should be some more engine related issues with the V10. So I guess stay tuned and subscribe if you want to check that out when it comes in. So thanks for watching.